Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Stacking Chips, your strategy source for the 2007 World Series of Poker, Bellagio Cup, and the dozens of other events in the coming weeks here in lovely Las Vegas. It was a pretty lame day for me yesterday in event number three, the $1,500 No Limit Hold'em Tournament. Not only did I last about three and a half hours, but at the end of the tournament, I'm no longer going to hold the record for winning the largest non-main event tournament in World Series history. Yesterday's event actually generated over 2,900 players. Mine had 20, like just under 29, so there's going to be a new record holder now, unfortunately. But records were meant to be broken, I suppose. Today's event four, which is a $1,500 pot limit hold'em event. I definitely prefer no limit over pot limit, but this is a World Series, and it's all about the bracelets, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. You know, it's, it's, it's tempting to, to play online on Sundays because all, all the sites are running their major tournaments, and there's so much money to be won. But ultimately, I think, you know, we online players have all year to play online, and uh, the World Series is only once a year, so why not try to accumulate as many bracelets as we can, I suppose. So I have another great guest on the show today. If you follow live poker at all lately, you've definitely heard of him. He's been one of the hottest players on the WPT circuit, Mr. J.C. Alvarado. JC, welcome to the show, man. Thanks Glad to have you Thanks here. Thanks for having me. So you're another online pro turned live once you turned 21 uh, a few months ago or something. Tell, tell me, tell us a little bit about your background and, and transitioning from online to live and how you got started and, and the success that you've had. Yeah, I got started uh, just like everyone else, playing you know like small tournaments at home with friends, and uh, I found online poker and. I deposited money and never looked back. I, I, I grinded like three six limit hold'em for, for you know almost a year while I learned everything, and um, then I had a, a a bit of a tournament rush in uh, in March of last year before I turned 21, and uh, that's when I started doing good online, building my bankroll up, and um, right after that when I turned 21, I I, uh, I started playing live, in the World Series, the WPTs, and all that. And so you've had, you've had quite a bit of success lately, right? I mean, it seems like every other week you're at you're at a final table lately. And I know you you just had a big World Poker Tour finish. Tell tell us a little bit about your uh, your recent success on the live tour. Well, it started um, last year. I had a final table at one of the series events um, in June, uh, one of the smaller ones that start after the main event. And that was like my first real uh, experience going deep in a live tournament. And after that, I, I didn't cash at all for like four months, five months. I went on the worst run I've ever had. And it all started this year. It started in, in Bahamas. I, uh, I won the, the 1000 event at Bahamas. And then after that, I've, I've been doing well, like in LAPC, in Reno, and, um, and just now in Mandalay. And you got... Uh did you final table the LAPC event? I final tabled uh, 2,500 in LAPC, and then I got 15th in the main event. And then you also came in second, second to JC Tran, is that right, yes, in Reno? to JC Tran in Reno, and ninth at Bellagio, and eighth right now at Mandalay. Awesome, man. Great job. Okay. So, And then you'll be playing a bunch of World Series events this year also, I imagine? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll play all the No Limit events, some Pot Limit Omaha events, and like some maybe Omaha 8 or better events. Awesome. Well, good luck. Yeah, thanks. Hey, I want to, uh, there's a hand that I, I got into a discussion with about with someone yesterday that I, I will actually watch play this hand. I want to get your take on it and share mine as well. It was a pretty interesting situation. It was in the uh, $1,500 No Limit event, mm -hmm. and um, the, they were on the bubble. They were six out of the money, Okay. And uh, blinds were were eight and sixteen hundred. My my friend who was on the button had twenty k in chips, twenty thousand chips. So eight and sixteen blinds. It's folded around to the hijack position. So you know button plus two or whatever. Okay. Hijack limps for sixteen hundred. My friend looks down at ace king, and raises about the pot to about six thousand. Okay. Okay. The blinds fold. The uh, limper shoves, and limper's got about 50,000 in chips, okay. and puts my friend who's on the button all in. All in. And he decides to call. He's got ace-king. The limper who shoved had pocket fours. Flop comes, king, rag, rag, turn four. Wow. So he busts in sixth place. And we, we had this, or sorry, six out of the money. So we had the discussion. I said, well, why not just shove there? And he said, well, I'm trying to represent a strong hand. And it, it looks stronger if I don't shove there. 
and he has to know I'm committed, so how can he possibly shove? And I said, you know, I, I completely disagree. I think in that spot on the bubble, the last thing you want to do is give your opponent a chance to play back at you and make you face with a decision. So I, I said, you know, in my opinion, that's, that's a shove every time. When, when, you know, when you have 10 to 15 big blinds, a limper in front of you, you know he's a weak player, you know, it's, you don't want to see a flop. You know, what, what do you think? Would you agree there? That I, I totally agree with you. I, uh, as you were telling me this, I was thinking, well, he should have shoved. Yeah. Um, the thing is that you, you don't want to, these people that play the, the World Series events, they, like, honestly, have, like, a lot of them don't know what they're doing. And you don't, even though you don't have fold equity, they might not know that. So all they see is an opportunity to re-steal on you or to or to maybe get you away from your hand. Um, I don't think they, they see the fact that it looks stronger. They see going all in as looking stronger. Maybe he calls, maybe he doesn't, but the thing is that you don't want to get just called for 6,000 and then see a flop and then miss. Yeah. Well, what do you do when you miss? What do you do when the board comes like deuce 5-5? Five, five? Exactly, or 8-9-10, yeah. you know? So yeah, I had the same argument, and I said, you know what, if, if you're going to play that hand, you absolutely want to push there, because realistically, you're not committing yourself. When, when you have 20,000 in chips, you raise it to six, you still have 14 behind. Any other time in the tournament, you're committed. But when, when you're six out of the money playing hand for hand, and they're paying 290-some-odd spots, you can still fold to the money there, if you mm -hmm. wanted to, and yeah. you're definitely not committed, because yeah. you're on the button, you have, you know seven hands or whatever before the blinds come around yeah so you can easily make it to the money there if, yeah. if you want to get off the hand so my argument was that you're definitely not committed so you need to shove there yeah so i completely agree with you but mm -hmm. yeah the players here are um are definitely much weaker than what we're used to on the world poker tour yes have, have you had any other hands that uh that you want to share that have you know sort of been along those lines also yeah um actually yesterday was just insane for me because i've been coming off all these world poker tour events that i've been playing you know you play tables with ivy with joanda with all these amazing players and you put moves on them you uh, you see flops you have more more blinds you you know you, you can get some play in and now against these guys at the series who don't fold who like play straightforward actually you think they're getting tricky but it messes with your head and uh they just do things that like don't make sense to me sometimes yesterday the way i busted was i uh i went back down to 3500 in chips when a guy uh rivered a two outer on me so i was down to 3500 in chips and um i raised it with pocket queens at the 100 200 level i made it 600 um a guy called behind me a guy called behind him and this and this lady who like i mean she had no clue really what she was doing she had smooth called me before with ace king and when someone went all in she folded because she didn't want to see a flop she was getting like huge odds to call with ace king so now i know she like she's weak she doesn't want to get it all in she just calls the flop comes like 9 7 deuce or something like that like completely you know meaningless flop unless someone flopped a set and I decided to check just to see what happens because there's a lot of action behind me and I'm first to act um, the first guy checks the other guy checks and this lady bets like 1200 at this point I have like 2900 left so I have to shove here there's no way I can't and uh so I move all in it folds to her and she insta calls me with uh with pocket kings which is something you'll never ever see someone do you know someone call after two people with pocket kings just smooth call and you know if you're doing it out of like being tricky maybe that's a genius move but she was doing it because she didn't want to see an ace flop if she saw an ace flop she could get away from her hand um whereas if, i know she she's smooth calls and folds ace king so if she re-raises me i can muck those queens if she re-raises me pre-flop yeah, because exactly, there's yeah. no way she's putting in her money worse than you know worse than ace worse than kings or aces. Right. You know, a lot of these amateur players that I that you know we come across in these World Series events, they they just want to let the the cards play for themselves. They don't want to try to get tricky. You know, they they want to play an ace king, and if if the flop doesn't come, ten jack queen, or you know, if the flop comes like ace seven seven, they're scared to death because they think someone yeah. has a seven. Yeah. When they have two kings, they're scared that someone has aces. Yeah. So they just want to play their, their hands, and they're just going to check call everything. 
until they have the nuts. And yeah. even sometimes then they still just... That's exactly the thing. If they see A7-7 seven, seven and they have Ace-King, they'll, ch- they'll never fold it, but they'll be, they'll be saying the whole time, I'm scared you have a 7. So even if you try to bluff it, they'll be like, well, I got a call, I have Ace-King, you might have the 7, you probably have me beat, but I call. They yeah. do that all the time. So bluffing becomes you know, meaningless in these tournaments. Yesterday I had my iPod on and I just watched episodes of South Park and The Office and just tried not to get bored at all. And um, so I wouldn't do anything tricky and I wouldn't get... So I just played standard. Yeah, see, I I made a mistake yesterday. Just, you know, my instinctively I, I play poker as if I'm playing against good players. So one of my problems is that I frequently give, give my opponents too good of credit, which I did yesterday. And... Um, so I'm I'm sitting. I didn't last long in the tournament. It lasted like three or three and a half hours or something. I'm I'm on the button with two sixes. The blinds are one and two hundred. It's folded around to the cutoff. Who raises to eight hundred? Right. Typically in that spot, it's you know you you have to assume he's on a steal because he's it's folded to the cutoff. Mm-hmm. He raises. He's raising four BBs instead of three. So it's you know it's it's a little bit of a big raise. You have to assume he's got you know maybe. Probably five, not a monster, fours, right? Yeah, so. so I'm sitting there with two sixes. I think he's stealing. So I'm going to re-steal. So I shove for 2,200. Of course he insta-calls with pocket queens. You know, and, yeah. and I obviously lose a hand. But, you know, it, when you're playing in these World Poker Tour events against all the top-name pros, you really, you know, your, your opponents have... They, they play a certain way, and when you see the same patterns in, with amateur players... They're, you know, it looks like they're playing the same way, but yeah. they have different cards. Yeah. These are guys, you know, nine other players at my table yesterday. It was their very first ever World Series tournament. Yep. So they're not going to be in there raising with position. And yeah, they're not going to be re-stealing or anything. Right, like and that. when they make a, a small raise, it's because their hands are weak. Mm-hmm. They make a small raise with ace-jack. When they make a big raise, they have kings or aces. Yep. So totally opposite of what the professional player would do. Yeah, you, you see these people go in, uh, in, like, for five times a big blind in the second level, third level, for like a fourth of this stack, and they said, look at this, I have aces, I just didn't want any action. That's their, that's their mentality, they refuse to go broke with aces. And I've, I've found out that like they love going in preflop, because that's what they see on TV. So if you, re-stealing is a move that I don't like to do as much as like actually floating, or like peeling a flop and then, and then moving all in on the flop. Because these guys, you know, if they have ace queen and you move in pre flop or ace jack even, they'll try to put you on pocket fives. If they have pocket fives, they'll try to put you on two overs. They always say that. Oh, you got two overs this time? I call pocket fives. How do they know? Um, like they have no idea, you know? But um, they like putting their money in pre flop because that's, that's where their edge is, you know, getting into those race situations over and over and over to accumulate chips. Um, with your hand, I think, I mean, maybe he could have a weak hand, or maybe he could have a really strong hand, and I think it's, it's usually the latter, because these guys are just afraid to get, to get, to see flops and get outplayed, so if you move him in pre-flop, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna call most of the time, I think, especially for 2200, it's like, what is it, like, 1400 yeah, he put more in six, than exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, 1600 more. So yeah, I agree. I mean, it was a terrible play on my part. Of course, right after I did it, I, I you know, kicked myself yeah. for, for not playing. Yeah, I do that all the time. Right. But <laughs> anyway, so thanks a lot for coming out here today. Thank really you. appreciate it. Today's the uh, 1500 pot limit event. Yep. Wish you and I the best of luck today. Hopefully, Hopefully we'll, we'll end up heads up at the, table, yeah. the final table together. Hope so. All right, everyone. That's it for today's episode of Stacking Chips. Make sure to tune in tomorrow and every day throughout the World Series for all kinds of strategy talk interviews, updates, analysis, and more right here on Card Player TV. And don't forget to email me your questions at stackingchips at cardplayer.com. From John Pokerchip Friedberg and JC Alvarado. Here on Stacking Chips, we're out of here. Good luck, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.